Today we are going to talk about histograms. They are very easy to use and super helpful. Hello my friends and let's get started. As a photographer there are two main places where you will find a histogram. One of course is inside your camera like this on the screen where you can display histograms that will show you the information about your picture and this can help you especially in light situation where you can't really read or see the screen you can at least see the histogram and it can tell you if the picture has some clipping problems or it's under or overexposed. The other place of course where you see this inside of your photo editing software like in Affinity Photo where it is on the top right on one of these tabs. It says histogram, click on that. If you don't see this tab, go to view and then to studio and then click histogram. So you have this little um, symbol here next to the name histogram so you can see it. It's a little bit small, but it's still very useful. And you can get a lot of interesting and very helpful information from that. And by the way, when you look at histograms, there is no right or wrong way how a histogram should look or can look. I will show you this in examples. For example, this is the histogram for the cat picture. And you can see we have here, of course, a lot of medium values in the picture. And when you look at the histogram, the easy way to read it or the only way to read it basically is on the left is all the dark parts, the dark colors, and on the right is all the light colors. So when you have lines and they are more to the right side means this is more, uh, there is values in the lighter parts. And if it's, there's more going on on the left side, then it's, there's more values in the darker parts. So if we look at the night picture, for example, like this one, you will see that the histogram values all shift over to the left side because we have a lot of dark values in a night picture and this doesn't indicate that there is any problem with the picture even though there is a lot of stuff going on here and you can see a lot of it is clipping. Clipping means that it's jumping out over the maximum value on the top so it clips over the top which means in this, if this has a longer part, is there's a wider column that is clipping, then it means it doesn't have any kind of gradient values in it. Could indicate a problem, but doesn't have to indicate a problem. Because, of course, in a night picture, you would expect that a lot of the picture is just black with no information in it other than darkness. So this is a completely okay histogram for a night photograph. On the other hand, if you have a picture like this, you have a lot of white values. So when we take another snapshot of the histogram to give you a bigger version, one second, you can see that we have a lot of information in the lighter parts and very little information in the darker parts. Of course, it's a very light day picture, so why would there be any information in the darker parts, right? And you could say that here we have clipping going on. But this isn't really a problem because if you want to have this kind of aesthetic in your picture, it's okay to have this kind of clipping because it looks good in the photo. The only thing you have to think about or you have to consider is, like I said, if you have these wider columns where information is clipping, the values are clipping, this means you don't have a gradient information in your picture. So you get these kind of um, steps of value steps. I can show you this again with the cat picture. One second, let's go back to the cat picture. And now I will put an effect on it, uh, which is called posterize. Here we go. And you can see we get these kind of steps. This is pretty extreme. And you can see now in the histogram that this is getting very spiky. Of course, this is extreme. It's an extreme example, but it's uh, to show you what is going on uh, in the histogram. So as you can see here, and let me zoom in a little bit into the picture. You can see here that we don't have any gradient. The color is jumping uh, from 
one value to a very different value. It's getting darker, of course, but in very um, harsh steps, not very soft steps. So then the histogram will look like this. So this will indicate a problem. If you see these kind of spikes going on, then you have kind of a problem, which might not be a problem because maybe this is what you want to have for a look, but it indicates that there is information missing. As you can see, there is no values here because everything is pressed into these spikes from the different kind of values. So this can indicate a problem, but it doesn't have to indicate. But now you know what that kind of thing means if this is going on. What you also should need, and this is kind of special, I think, with Affinity Photo, is when you look at this, it is also spiky. And it is spiky for a reason, but not for the reason you might think. You see, you have these spikes here. For some reason, Affinity Photo is saving on CPU power by not giving you a full histogram. So this is a very rough histogram, and this is why there are spikes. I don't know why they do that, but you see you have over here this little symbol is telling you this is a coarse histogram. And when you click on that, it will calculate a softer histogram. I mean, there's still these spikes in this picture. Uh, let's take another picture. We have a better kind of idea. Let's see here. Yeah, this. Okay. So you see suddenly the spikes are gone and it's very soft. And it's not really a problem. So this is a much better information, which um, is based on a lot more samples. And you can see it's much softer. You don't have these spikes anymore. So don't get stressed out by seeing these kind of spikes in your picture. And now we will go over to a live histogram. And we will take the cat picture because it's a really good example. And I will take a curve. You have, by the way, also a histogram here in the curve but it is not a live histogram. So you can see when I change the value, the histogram is not changing. I don't know why it's a, another specialty of Affinity Photo, but you still have the histogram up here that gives you all the information that you need. And you can see now in the histogram, again, in, this, uh, in the curve, it's the same thing. The light values are on the right side and the dark values on the left side. So if I go to the right side and pull down this part, then everything of the light values is getting darker. So um, because it's, it's, uh, you see, it's getting pressed. Everything is getting pressed to the left here. So everything, all the values are getting pressed to into the darker areas of the picture, right? If I do the other, the opposite. So I take this part, the, the left part and push it up. Everything is getting lighter, right? So you can see in the histogram that all the information is getting pushed to the right. Yeah. So this is how you can interpret this kind of information. And you can also see if you bend the curve in the middle and you will get a picture like this, where you can see it's pretty overexposed. Now you can see in the histogram that all the information or a lot of the information is pushed to the right and you can see this, um, oh, no, oh, that's the wrong one. I need sketch, sorry. Uh, let, let me take another screenshot so I can show you a bigger version. So if you take a picture where all the values should be more in the medium area, like with the cat picture, but you get something that looks like this and there is this kind of clipping thing going over here where a lot of stuff is happening. On the very right, you can see that there is much too much white information and a lot of clipping going on, which you can also see in our picture where all of these areas are blown out. On the other hand, of course, if you do the opposite and we will now with the curve, help of the curve underexpose the picture, you can see that the opposite is happening, right? So you go here, I take another screenshot. And again, you see this white line or you see this line in the histogram that's pressed against the left. 
and all the information is kind of pressed here which means a lot of the colors a lot of the gradients are completely black they are missing in the picture and you can see it here there is no information here anymore and you can't edit it if you would edit this and make it lighter there is still no information to get lighter so it would be just a solid color so this is indicating a problem in this case because relative to the picture this should not be so dark so it's always important to look at the picture and compare it to the histogram and see is the histogram as I expected or not does it match up with my expectations of the picture so this is basically how you use a histogram what the use of it is and how uh, to look at the picture there's some other specials I want to show you of course up here where it says all channels you can single out the channel so you can look at the different values and of course there are just three values because light or a picture that's made of light is just made of three colors which is red green and blue and because you're looking at a screen and you have taken a picture that's made from light you just have these three colors and they get then um how can i say recalculated into print colors when you're going to print your picture the other part that you can do and it's very important here is there you have these two boxes up here one says mark you the other one says layer mark you is very useful because you can make a selection on your layer and then click on mark you and it will give you a histogram of just the information that's going on inside of the selected area so this is super useful you can see when I move the selection around I can get different histograms and they will tell me if there might be some problems or I can see different information for just a very select part of the picture this is super useful then there is another part and that says layers so this will just show you the histogram of the layer that you are using right now this might be a bit strange but it's getting less strange if you consider having a layer that's not covering all of the pictures for example if I make a copy of this eye and I move it somewhere else like here um, now I without the box selected I have the histogram of everything but with I, when I click on layer I just get the histogram of this layer here you see so this is very very useful when you use a lot of different layers and you just want to see is everything all right with this layers can I adjust it in another way so as you can see histograms they are super easy they are super fun and very very useful to use inside of your camera but also inside of your photo program thank you for watching and um, I will do a new tutorial every two to three days so subscribe me if you enjoyed it give me a like if you like the video if you want to support me you can find me on patreon and it's just one dollar per month at the moment It's an early supporter program where you get the original files with all of my layers you can live chat with me you can suggest topics for videos that you want to see and you can post pictures where i give you live feedback or not live feedback but i give you feedback on your pictures so it's a lot of benefit uh, to supporting my channel thank you for watching see you next time and i hope you enjoyed the video bye